this lesson, we'll learn how to create a bump map within our Maya shading networks. Okay, fantastic. So I've got lesson 15, begin, open here. If you want to follow along with me, feel free to open this up from the project files for this course. So we have here a very simple scene. It's a, a chair with sort of this cloth draped over it. Now, earlier in this course, we experienced a bump map really, really briefly. But what you should know about a bump map is that it's a simple shading trick that creates the illusion of additional detail that's not modeled in. So in the case of this cloth hanging over our chair, if I were to select that, you'll see that it's actually pretty low resolution. Now, let's go ahead and just take a quick render here. Let me just jump up here and render the current frame. And when that comes back to me, you can see here that, yeah, even in renders, that cloth really doesn't look like cloth. It looks more like kind of a rubbery, a smooth rubbery surface. That's because cloth has a lot of little imperfections and little surface details that just aren't showing up here. This definitely doesn't uh, read as a fabric. So uh, let me go ahead and close out of the render view. And let's go ahead and start by opening up the hypershade here. Now I've already built a material here. It's this cloth underscore mat. So I'll middle click and drag it down. And let's expose all of the incoming connections. And uh, just for the sake of consistency, I'll go ahead and collapse those nodes and make the swatches larger. So we can kind of get a nice large view here. So you can see here is our surface material. Now, this particular node, we're not going to talk much about in this lesson. We'll actually be talking about layered textures in an upcoming lesson. But let's come over here and take a look here at this image. So um, now what we have here is a file node, just like we've seen before. And I've got here an image plugged into that. So um, if I came over here and let's see, just zoom in on this guy. And I'm going to tap this little S key right there. So what I've done is I've soloed this pattern tile.png file. If we come over and open up the material viewer, what you'll see here now is that this material, or rather this texture, has been soloed here inside of the material viewer. And you can see that it's actually a pattern repeating over and over and over again. So um, now I've done this through the 2D or the place 2D texture node rather by adjusting the number of repeats. Let me just set that back to one and you can kind of see that pattern a little bit better. Now I've also adjusted the rotation on this just so that it fits a little bit better based on the UVs for that cloth. So let me just plug in my repeat values again here. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this pattern and maybe use this for some bump texture. So let's just come down here and we'll just take these two nodes and kind of pull them down a little bit. Now, granted, I could bring a completely new file node in and the accompanying place 2D texture node, but we already have this texture in our scene. So we might as well go ahead and reuse this. So let me just select my cloth material here. And I'm simply going to middle click on this pattern tile.png node. And I want to drag it over and drop it into bump mapping. And you can see here that, well, there's my bump 2D node. And this is created anytime you plug in a file node into that bump mapping attribute. Let me just make it look consistent here. There we go. Fantastic. So the bump 2D node is where we control things like bump depth right over here. Now, before we begin to control that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take another quick render. Let me just go ahead and open up a viewport here. And I'll go ahead and snap that in, just like so. And let me just go ahead and tap the 6 key. And before I render this, take a look at this. My cloth, in the, even in the viewport, has turned to kind of a black and white preview of this texture here. That's because soloing this will actually not only display just the texture here in the material viewer, but it actually does the same thing here inside the viewport. If we want to get back to the material view, well, then we can come over and solo the cloth mat. And there we go. Fantastic. So let's come up here, and I'm going to do this through the render view. Even though I could come in and do that inside the hypershade, I, I want to show you a nice big preview here. So uh, let's go ahead and render this out. All right, great. So when that comes back to us, you can see here we've 
definitely added the illusion that there's some additional detail here. You can see that our little pattern has been sort of pushed into the surface of the material, so, or rather the fabric. Now this is kind of the opposite effect that I had envisioned. I had envisioned maybe making this pattern look like it's protruding off of the surface of the fabric just a little bit. So let's come into our shading network and uh, make that change. We'll just close out of the render view and open the hypershade back up. There we go, fantastic. So we've got this bump 2D node here and you can see that there's a bump depth. Now this bump depth is going to control the intensity of our bump map. So as you saw in our render, let me just grab that guy again, it's actually pretty intense. Now what we could do is we could come over here and begin to lower this down. Let's say instead of one, let's go with maybe a value of 0.25. So that's cutting it um, down significantly here. And I'll just come in and draw a little render region just so we can see kind of a comparison here. I'll go ahead and render out just that little square. Now you can see here as a um, mental ray is rendering this out. Um, yes, it did make the bump effect less intense. This is not near as deep as these guys over here appear, but they're still in the wrong direction. How do we fix that? Well, let's just jump back over here to our hypershade and let's come over here and instead of using a value of 0.25, let's try a value of negative 0.25. There we go. So we'll just jump back into our render view. And let me go ahead and render out that region one more time. And what you'll see here is when that wraps up, that just by changing that from a positive value to a negative value, it will allow us to invert the values that are being interpreted uh, in terms of the bump map. So what you should realize about a bump map, by default, black values will push in on the surface and white values are going to pull out on the surface or at least appear to. Now you should look at gray, say a 50% gray, look at that as a kind of a no change value. So uh, if we go darker than 50% gray, we're going to begin pushing in. If we go lighter than 50% gray, we're going to begin pulling out on the surface. So basically what in inserting a negative value into our bump 2D node does is it inverts that image and whatever intensity we're using it at. So uh, this is going to work perfect. Uh, I may even actually come in and reduce this down just a little bit. Let me go ahead and just render out the entire frame here just so I can see this a little bit, um, a little bit larger. All right, great. That's looking much, much better. So uh, again, in this lesson, we've learned what a bump map is and how we can begin to control a bump map through that bump 2D node. Now again, a bump map is a, a shading trick. It is faking the illusion of additional geometry. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you actually do need more geometry to create um, a certain detail, then what you'll need to know about is what we're going to discuss in the next lesson. In the next lesson, we'll begin learning about displacement maps here inside of Maya.